Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. Welcome back. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to do something that I'm calling my powder shootout, in which I'll be comparing six of my favorite powders using a Hornady 52 grain boat tail hollow point bullet. And I'll be testing each of these doing a ladder run with velocities from 3,000 to 3,200 feet per second. In order from the slowest burning powder to the fastest burning powder, We'll be shooting CFE-223, Varget, H-335, Accurate-2460, IMR-3031, and Accurate-2200. We will take these in order week by week, and we will post the results so you can see exactly which powders perform with these bullets. All right, so let's get on with it. Next up in the ongoing saga of the powder shootout, we have H-335, and we'll be shooting charge weights from 23.3 to 25.4 grains of powder. We won't even come close to the maximum charge weight, which is 27.3, so we'll be two grains away from that. So we will shoot these, see how they perform, and get back to you with the results. In the ongoing saga of our power shootout, we now go to episode number four, and we'll be shooting Hodgson's H-335. This powder is number 92 out of 170 powders on the burn chart from fastest to slowest. So that means there are 91 powders that are faster and 71 powders that are slower than this particular powder. It's faster than CFE-223, Varget, and Accurate-2460 but it's also slower than IMR-3031 and Accurate-2200. So we'll be shooting five warming shots first, and then we'll be shooting five 10-shot groups that charge weights, weights from 23.3 to 25.4 grains of powder. And these will be flying at 3,000 to 3,200 feet per second, shooting 10-shot groups at 100 yards. As always, you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting or you can skip forward to the results that follow. Okay, so this shot a little differently from some of my previous groups. On my previous groups, the starting charge weight seemed to perform the best, but on here, we have one ragged hole here with the flyer off to the side, but touching the others. So we have 10 shots right here clustered together at 25.4 grams. And without a doubt, that will be the best group of the day. 
pretty good at 24.3 clustered together pretty well here with a little scattering here and here pretty tight group here with a flyer here off to the side but we will take these home measure these with the Fordoff ballistics app using the group analysis function and we'll get back to you with the results okay welcome back to the powder shootout part four I've got my range results back and today we're shooting the H335 powder and we're shooting a 52 grain boat tail hollow point bullet as per the previous targets and today we're shooting charge weights from 23.3 to 25.4 grains of powder in any event the other targets had started out with the first group being the tightest and then the groups kind of disintegrated as we went from one to five but uh, I'll show you these individually as we move along but I first want to show you group number five I want to zoom in on this I'm going to go ahead and um, give away my thunder here. But this was just outstanding to me. Uh, we had an extreme spread of 0.83 inches, uh, and we had a mean radius of 0.27, which if you take that mean radius, which is half a circle and double it, that means you had an average group size of 0.54 inches. That's out of 10 shots at 100 yards and you take that flyer out of it notice this flyer off to the side you take that out and you're back to a 0 0.60 inch group on nine shots at 100 yards so just very thrilled with that so it turned out that the higher charge weight actually turned out to be the best charge weight so we started out i was shooting really high on this first target and so I decided to adjust it down two clicks, and I'll show you these individually. But I was shooting high on that first target, and so I dropped the scope down two clicks for the next target. And then on the third target, as often happens as that barrel begins to torque and twist, sure enough, it continued to twist and turn and shoot down. And so I for the fourth target, I adjusted the scope one click up so as not to destroy my point of aim. Even though it was shooting right, it wasn't really hitting the point of aim. It was somewhat, but still, I wanted to avoid that. So I adjusted that one click up, and then, of course, I showed you the last target there. Shot a little bit high uh, and to the right, but man, that was just such a tight group. Just so happy with that. <coughs> Okay, so starting out at 23.3 grains, we had a decent group here. Now, again, we're shooting 10-shot groups, and when you shoot a 10-shot group, you can expect things to open up. It's one thing to shoot a 3-shot group or a 5-shot group. You're going to get decent results with that and some idea of how the rifle shoots. But if you really want to know how that rifle shoots, shoot larger group sizes, larger numbers of shots. 10, 20, 25, 30 shot groups, and then you'll really get a picture of how that rifle shoots. And of course, I'm measuring with the Hornady Ballistics app using the group analysis function. So here's a picture of my target, and here's a picture from the group analysis. And you see the red X there that I've drawn on the target here. That corresponds to the white X on the photo from the Hornady Ballistics app. And then, of course, I have noted the distance also in elevation and windage, the difference. So we're shooting 1.85 inches. We're impacting 1.85 inches high. Okay, so we're shooting high on the first target, but we had a, an extreme spread of 1.27 inches and a mean radius of 0.37 inches. So that's shooting pretty decent uh, i mean times two that gives you a 0.74 average group size for 100 yards and again we're shooting 10 shots so moving on to 23.8 grains of powder the rifle is shooting to the right but it's shooting a little bit tighter and even though we have a larger extreme spread 
we've got a flyer over here which made that 1.41 inches, but we have a mean radius of only 0.34 inches. Now we adjusted the scope two clicks down, so it went from hitting 1.85 high to hitting 0.72 high which is good. That's kind of where you want to be in there. Here we're shooting for groups. We're not trying to hit the bullseye. We're shooting for group size here. But you take that flyer out and you've got a group size of what looks like just under an inch here for nine shots. And so we had a mean radius of 0.34. So you double that and that gives you an average group size of 0.68 inches for 100 yards. That's pretty decent shooting right there. So we go on to 24.3, and here's your average point of impact here, um, 0.58 to the right and a quarter high. And you had an average mean radius because this was a little more scattered here. Uh, you, it's stringing horizontally, and because it's a little more scattered there, uh, you've got a 0 0.40 mean radius which gives you an average group size of 0.8 inches. Moving up to 24.9, we've got a uh, extreme spread of 1.44 inches. So these are kind of spread out, although you've got a flyer here and you've got nine that are clustered together here at probably just over an inch. But you've got a mean radius of 0.49, so that gives you an average group size of just under an inch at 0.98. And then this is where I really got happy, although it just pisses me off sometimes that this flyer here on the right was my last shot. I had one ragged hole going here, and I was just praying, Lord, don't let me blow this. And sure enough, it went off to the right. So, um, but, I mean, that's either the rifle or it's me or it's the ammo or it's one of the three or it's all three. But anyway, I was really happy with that because out of 10 shots, we had an extreme spread of 0.83 inches and a mean radius of 0.27, which is an average group size of 0.54. So I don't know if I just got extremely lucky here or if that was just a very good load because I don't believe that's the maximum uh, charge weight for that bullet. I think you can still go higher on that, so I may experiment further with that. Okay, so with the previous targets, they all started off well and got scattered as you went further down the line, but it may just be a difference with this particular powder. Somehow, it just likes that heavier charge weight, so we may have to extend this out and, ex and experiment with that a little bit more. But anyway, those are my results today. As always, I welcome your thoughts and ideas, so please leave those below. And I hope you'll like and subscribe. Be sure and share this with your friends. And thanks for watching.